Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another photo critique. I'm Toby. And I'm Christina. And we are working our way through those images submitted way back in October. We're getting there. I think just three more episodes and we'll be all done. So before the end of the year, uh, for sure, uh, before Christmas, we're going to make it our goal to get all of these done through. And then we'll start off on a new foot next year. Do you want to get us started? So uh, the smoke shots are always can be very cool because of this kind of ethereal pattern that the smoke makes. Uh, I've seen some really neat ones. Uh, there was, I think it was on Petapixel a few months ago, somebody said something like, out of 150,000 pictures, here are four, I've made 10 or something, a gallery. And they're amazing. Um, and there was a lot of discussion back and forth, like this person had literally spent a year making these really cool smoke pictures. So the first thing I notice when I look at this smoke picture, after I notice this is this pattern in here is really neat, what I was just talking about, but then right away we hit this corner, this bright window, and that plus this little bit of, looks like Tupperware lid stacked here, really draws me away from what I think is an interesting shot. This needs to be recomposed in such a way that this is not part of the shot. Put a, um, you know, a black sheet behind this um, or change your angle so you're shooting more over here though it looks like we're just starting to get to something in that left edge. Um, those I think would make this a lot stronger. So I, I, I do agree with you about many of those points. Um, so the first thing that strikes out to me about this image when I look at it is definitely the smoke. So the smoke is the most interesting part about this image and the subject of the image. And I understand that you have to have some light coming in from the room, um, some backlight in order to capture the smoke um, in this way because otherwise then it would probably be too dark. Uh, the room would be too dark to capture the smoke. Uh, so the, the light kind of has to to illuminate the smoke to, in order for you to be able to capture it. So that being said, the window does, while it does the job of illuminating the smoke, it also acts as a really distracting element. So what I would do is I think I would uh, turn to the right just a little bit, move to the right just a little bit, um, move the Tupperware and either close in on this right here up against the brown wall or try to compose the whole candle with a little bit of the smoke against the black wall. Um, so you may have to shift the candle a little bit forward or back and you know play with your positioning and the distance from uh, your camera to the candle to kind of get the composition right but this looks like you know the it was just kind of captured on the spot and not you know not very not, it's not a very thoughtful image because of all of the distracting elements so I think if you were to make those little tweaks um, you would have a much stronger image. Yep. I'll just, just add, chime in um, while you were talking. I was just really studying this area here, and it's really cool. I mean, the smoke you've captured here really has a nice feel to it. I think your aperture and your shutter speed are really perfect uh, for this, but getting rid of those elements following my suggestions and or Christina's suggestions, I think you'll have a much stronger image. Thank you, Ryan. I got one from Andrea. So... My first reaction here is that it's a little bit over sharpened. It looks like it looks almost HDR ish because I see a lot of ghosting in the edges yep, of to, things. Yes, that's right. So that's one of the keys to finding or um, telling whether or not an image is an HDR. Around your transitions from light to dark, you'll often have some ghosting. And you can see it here around the leaves, you can see it around some of the building. The other key I often use is the clouds. In stronger HDRs, the darker parts of the clouds take on this really gray and kind of muddy appearance. Now, lot, we can have lots of discussions about HDRs and, and generally, I don't dislike HDRs, but I like HDRs that I can't quite tell it's an HDR. Yes. It just looks like the image has a lot of dynamic range and it hasn't been pushed past the point of, well, 
They don't know. Of rea realism. Realism, yes. Right. So, you know, this is what my opinion about HDRs. Um, and obviously lots of other people have been very successful at doing the opposite of what I think is, you know, or what I would do. But I think the purpose of HDR is to give photographers an opportunity to still capture darkness and highlights or so shadows and highlights in one image when the contrast is too strong, it's too harsh for our cameras to capture. I don't think that HDR was created as a, really a style stylization tool even though you know many 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 people use it that way um, and that's fine and that's fine yeah. yes absolutely um, you know it's like tilt shifts like tilt shifts have a, a very specific purpose for architectural photography and yet people use it creatively all the time and sometimes it looks cool but sometimes it can look kind of yeah not so cool so uh, that being said I really like the composition in this image yeah. I think it's really great. Everything is very uh, filled in. There's no dead space. Um, you guys may be hearing Liam talk. Mm -hmm. We just got back home from visiting family in Maryland and he has been very, very love starved. So. So he's been kind of grouchy. But anyway, going, moving on. Moving on, so I just, I would echo, composition I think here is wonderful and this kind of spacing between the tree line of the alley or the, the, the avenue um, and these building fronts moving down is very great. And HDR has allowed us to see uh, this really nice detail in here which I think otherwise would have been lost completely in shadow. And so that's great. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. All really nice. You know, being picky, I don't know, maybe take that contrail out since eh, it's just partly. But I like it. That's just silly. Makes a nice tea up there. All right, thank you, Andrea. So this image looks, this it's funny because it looks like it could be take, could have been taken here in New England or in the Mid-Atlantic. Yep. Um, and it was taken in Finland, right? Yep. Yeah, it so it's, it's funny um, how similar. Oita Lake Mansion, Beach of Oita Mansion. I love it when I try to read foreign language words. So, but this is from Miko. Go ahead, sorry. So this is, uh, I love this image because it's super simple. You know, there's no uh, super distracting things. Everything's kind of converging to a center point or actually just to the little, the uh, foliage in the back. Um, so to me that, I, I don't know, I think it's, it's really simple and really nice. The only thing I would change is actually, you know, yeah, it looks a little bit, a little crooked. Do you guys know? Yeah, I was gonna say. Do you guys know what I'm gonna say? It looks a little bit crooked to me, I but maybe it, it might just be an optical illusion. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that makes a huge difference. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I like yep. it. I'm gonna turn this back on just for a second so we can see the rule of thirds here. I think uh, Miko, you've done a great job. The rule of thirds. Uh, the horizon line is just about on that third. And we've got a lot of empty space up here, but it's just nice sky with a gradient to it and the colors of the clouds. Uh, and I agree with Christina, I really like this image. I think one tip, I to just, just now talking about HDRs, but maybe also if, if you shot this in RAW, bringing up your shadows a little bit so we get just a little bit more detail. I don't um, know. And the trees over there on the left yeah. to balance the detail we're getting on the trees on the right. Just I, a little bit, you can see I brought up the shadows. I don't have an issue with the darkness back okay. there. Okay. But. This, you know, this reflection here is really nice. Really like it. Yeah. Nice image. Simplicity is the key here. Yep. Thank you, Miko. Now we're moving on to, let's go back to the library so we can see this is uh, Eduardo, I believe. Uh, yep, and we've had uh, images from him before. His wife, a nice black and white shot of his wife. Nice, nice. I, I would assume that she's probably very happy with this shot. It's a very nice shot. Um, I don't know if I love the black and white. Um, and I actually, I don't know if I love the light in this image. It, it looks like some of it is directional, so coming from uh, a, above to the left of the subject, if you know, if we're looking straight on to left of the camera. Our guess, left, her or To our right, left, right, yeah. Her right. To the left of the camera. Um, 
And the key light, um, which you can tell because there is a lot of, um, you know, like th this kind shine. of, gl yeah, the shiny, like kind of glary uh, reflections and here in the eyes too. It just kind of washes the image out a little bit. I would like to see the key or actually even the, um, the image that's on camera left to see it dim down a little bit. So stop down a little bit, you know, make it a little bit darker, not as bright. Um, yeah, but otherwise, um, I, I love, you know, I love the post. I love her expression. I, I love everything else about it. Yeah. Can you tell us what you mean by key light? So the key light is the main light, the light that illuminates most of the subject. So for example, you know, I'm trying to figure out whether, whether the key light is coming from straight on from right behind the camera or from slightly to the left of the camera based on the shadows and based on the catch lights here in the eyes. It looks like, it looks like the key light might be, might be the one that I said that's coming from camera left. Um, but it's just really, uh, bright and it's, it, and it's causing these, this glare right here that mm -hmm. I, I am not a very, I'm and, not it, a and it's of. flattening. It's very image. flat. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. though there is depth because there is, you know, there's the shadow right here and shadow right here. So it is very flattening. Now, I think one, one benefit of that a little bit flatter light though, is, um, it's a little bit more pleasant on the skin in that fact that it smooths out the skin without any having to do post-processing. Would you agree? Uh, I mean, so, you know. Yes and no. Okay. I don't, I mean, I think that the, the softer the light, the less that you're going to see detail in the face. Okay. So the other so thing that I will say um, is that uh, when you're photographing uh, people from an angle like this, so her shoulders are sort of facing, um, oh. facing her right or her left, yeah. right? So camera right. right. Her shoulders are facing camera right. I think, I think, yeah, I think and the see. light Here's her shoulders right here, right, facing off this way. Yes, yeah. and her face is kind of turned towards the camera, um, and you are lighting from this side, from camera left. Um, you're going to have not a ton of transition of light to dark, it, you know, between her cheek and her chin and her neck. So everything, all of this, kind of looks like it's to it can, like it's all together, whereas if you were lighting her from this side, um, which is actually called short lighting, um, you know, you would have the shadow come right under this side of the nose, and then you would have a lot more definition here on her on her chin, um, kind of like you have here, but here the definition is created because, uh, because of the space between the shoulder and between the chin, if that makes sense. So that's a little tip for portrait lighting. If you're photographing someone, it's usually better to light them from uh, the, I guess, the short side of the face, if that makes sense. So this would be the broad part of the face. So this is what you've done is called broad lighting. And this is the short part of the face, um, depending on where the subject is facing. It's kind of a tricky thing to explain when I can't show you guys. It's more of like a visual type thing. But this is something that's on our list to show in but a little maybe bit more it makes detail. sense. Yep. Yeah. Um, and a little bit of a portrait example. Nice. I think the framing is nice. I do too. Um, nice. And of course, it, her expression uh, and she's got both a, a genuine smile and smiling with her eyes, I think, is all really nice. And that is really important. And I'd just like to point out you're using a full frame camera with a 70 to 200 which is just a lovely portrait lens. Yeah. I think people uh, forget that at times or think about that for just sports and wildlife, but really in its f4.2 and you shot it at f5.6 and you can see that we've got a nice depth of field back here because, or a very clean background, but you can even see her shoulder uh, is fading out of uh, focus. Nicely done. Thank you, Eduardo. And now we've got one from Ursula. Who's also, we've also seen work from her before, all nice. And I really like this juxtaposition of uh, windmill, trees, windmill, windmill. And so we've got this leading line. And this is in some ways similar to uh, this image, 
leading our eye down through the image and in this one too with the reflection leading on down and so I think they all share that strength of having a strong line that gives us something to latch on to and follow through. Yep. Now, it's also interesting, it says Old Cathedral. And so I wonder, is that all of it or has it lost parts of it? Because it looks kind of, it looks like it's kind of cut in half. It does. It does. And so I think that's really interesting. Yeah. I like the, um, <coughs> excuse me. I like the, uh, what, what would you call it? perspective from like the tallest windmill to then these trees and then a smaller windmill and then a smaller windmill. I really yep. like that. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. I don't really know how to explain why that, why well, I, I think like it's, 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 it helps focus that leading right. line again, very similar to those images I was just going back to. We've also got these rows in the cornfield here, the field. Uh, yeah. Leading us up to, and I, I think the old cathedral, since it is the title, or old chapel, sorry, um, is is the subject. And I think that's all nice. It's a very nice image. Uh, the sky, you know, has a little bit of texture to it, which is good. Uh, you know, it's always really tough when you're right up against a flat gray sky, nothing at all. But this has got a little bit of texture. I, I might try to bring out just a little bit more texture out of the sky. I don't think so. Okay. I always <laughs> like to pick at least one thing on each image that you disagree on that I agree on. You're always right. I'm going to disagree so. on okay. that. And the other really small thing is I might just clone that out down yeah, there. Yeah. I um, will agree with you on that. Um, there's some other ones, but they don't bother me as much as this one that sticks up the highest really close to the edge. But it's pretty minor. All in all, a nice image and uh, has, you know, the sky is flat, but these trees have a very good uh, sense of uh, depth to them. And I like yeah, that. Yeah. Very good. I don't think the sky is flat at all. I think that there's a ton of texture in the sky. I think there's texture in it, but I think there could be a little more. But then it would look HDR-ish and muddy. I think there's a I think there's a point in between what I want and what you want that, well, you're happy, so it's good. Yeah. And uh, I like your watermark, but it is it's kind very of subtle. lost. It's very subtle. It almost might be too subtle. I <laughs> often argue for very subtle watermarks that don't detract from your image. Um, I wonder how it would look over here on this slightly different color because it's blending in with all these little stalks from the dried up plant. And also just take, taken with the 40 millimeter pancake on a crop sensor. And so a lot of times people think, I'm gonna take a landscape shot, I need some big wide angle lens. Yeah. And this was the equivalent of about, you know, what is it, about 60-ish or so. Um, maybe, no, it's a little bit more than that. Uh, and it's a great shot. Yep. Thank you so much, Ursula. All right, so that is all of the pictures we're gonna look at today. And we've got a couple more of these coming before Two the more. end of the year, as I said. Yeah. And we'll be all through and on to new stuff in the new year. Exciting. Thanks. It is exciting. Yeah. Thanks everybody who submitted. You sound so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. No, you really are. Really? Yeah, I'm excited. Okay. I'm excited to see new images. Yes. So thank you so much to everybody who submitted and uh, been, people have been asking how to submit images for this. We're working our way through these. There's no way to submit images at this time. New ways will be coming soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.